we're standing here in this ditch and there are people who will go out and hay the ditches. It's free forage and it's good forage for cattle if uh, the hay is put up right. Well, I'm Dr. Larry Hollis. I'm the Extension Beef Veterinarian here at Kansas State University and we're outstanding in a little patch of white sweet clover. This is growing in its favorite place, which is along roadside ditches, which you see here. It'll also grow in fields. This is a, a legume that is a, can be a good source of cattle feed. Uh, it's related to alfalfa, and it's uh, pretty tasty most of the time. Uh, we'll make hay. Cattle can graze these things and get along very well with it. The problem that we may run into from time to time is when we go into a pasture situation and we decide that we're gonna make hay out of this. If we do a good job of hay making, if we cut the hay, if we allow it to cure out to where the stems are fully dry and then we make it into hay, we'll be in good shape. The problem comes in if we cut it and we don't allow it to cure out and the stems are still a little damp when we make hay out of it. And for some reason, these plants are very prone to molding. And when they mold, the mold will take this metabolite that's in this plant called cumarin and it will change it to dicumarin. Dicumarin is a, a toxin that we find in some things like commercial mouse and rat poisons. And it causes bleeding problems in animals that eat a lot of this. It's imperative that any producer who's gonna put up hay that's gonna have a large percentage of either white sweet clover or yellow sweet clover or spots that are heavy with either one of these plants make sure that those get cured out properly before it's actually baled into hay. Otherwise, we can get into toxicity problems and, and it's not pretty when that happens. What we have here is a weed known as kochia or kochia scoparia. This is a, an escaped ornamental. It was brought over many, many years ago as a, an ornamental plant, got loose, got in the wild and grows just about any place that we have disturbed soil. It grows extensively throughout the Midwest and Western states and uh, it's basically everywhere. This is a good, can be a good cattle feed. If you graze it or if you hay it while it's in the very immature stages. Usually we like to hay it while it's like no higher than about 18 to 26 inches tall. When kosher gets to the stage that we're at now, uh, it starts getting to the point where I get nervous about it. If we were to turn cattle in to graze on this, um, we might have problems with it because as it matures, or as the old timers say, as it gets rank, it starts getting big, coarse, it starts putting out seed heads. It also has a tendency to accumulate a toxin. Uh, it makes a toxin actually, it's called oxalate. And oxalates will damage the liver and kidney of cattle, sheep, and horses that might be grazing this plant. And uh, it can kill them. Uh, it can get very serious very fast. It looks good and it's green. And early on, it is a very good forage, but when it gets mature, then we have the potential to have some major problems with it. So we always wanna make sure that we know where we're at with this. We can test this for oxalate levels. We do know that uh, sometimes it will run as high as six to 9% on a dry weight basis. And if it's that high, it's gonna cause problems for sure. So if you need to know more about kochia and when it's safe to feed it and when it's not, just check with your local extension office. Uh, they have information on this that they'll be glad to share with you.